January 6, 2020, Town of Scarborough Planning Board hearing. If you could all please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic. Doreen, could you call the roll, please? Nicholas McGee. Here. Rachel Hendrickson. Here. Roger Bealy. Here. Jennifer Ladd. Here. Rick Meinking. Here. We are missing uh, Robin and Rick this evening. Uh, Rick Meinking, you will be a voting member. Uh, next item on the agenda is the approval of minutes uh, for December 16th, 2019. Uh, has everyone had a chance to review them? And are there any questions or comments? I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. No, so moved. I have a second on that. I can't hear you. Do I have a second on the motion? Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? I'm sure, that is unanimous. Thank you. Uh, at this time, we do have a couple of uh, agenda changes uh, that we're going to make this evening. Uh, number five: the election of the officers, chair, vice chair, and secretary. Town Council has yet to make it official, uh, our new membership for the upcoming cycle. So we'd like to table this item until we uh, officially seat, formally seat the members. Uh, so I will make the motion to uh, table that item. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? And that item is tabled. Um, next item, number six, election of committee appointees. That too, again, uh, should occur after we have a, an official board uh, sitting for the new year, so I will make a motion to table item number six. I have a second. Second. All in favor? That item is tabled. Um, I also want to, uh, we do have a, could be a potentially meaty topic on here on item number seven. What I'd like to do is we do have two uh, other business items that are kind of more of our routine business for the development. I'd like to move those two ahead of item number seven, uh, so making Crossroad Holdings LLC uh, item number seven, Preston Properties item number eight, and then the marijuana hearing uh, on number nine. Uh, I think that should give us time to properly deliberate and uh, discuss what, what should be an interesting topic. So. Uh, I will make the motion to move the agenda as mentioned. So, I have a second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Okay, thank you. That said, we're going to have Crossroad Holdings LLC request a master plan review for the town council, town center residential neighborhoods within the downs. Jamel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, the applicants in front of the board this evening to continue the review of the conceptual master plan for the town center residential neighborhood. Um, as a reminder, the proposal here is located just to the north of the phase one mixed residential project. So the applicant was last before you all in December. Um, as you may recall, this, the bulk of the discussion at the meeting was about the types of housing proposed and the space and bulk regulations associated with the development. The applicant did revise the space and bulk regulations as requested and staff is generally comfortable with the approach. Staff has suggested several uh, modifications focused on building height and setbacks associated with the street-loaded garages. Uh, so the board should be sure to discuss these uh, with the applicant. The applicant also updated the connectivity plan and relabeled the street cross-sections uh, so they correlate with the plan based on discussions with the board. And then staff did recall that the applicant was receptive uh, to the suggestion of reducing the pavement width along the Downs Road, resulting in the elimination of a bike lane along the westerly side of the road and the widening of the multi-use pathway to 10 feet as this modification would help to reduce vehicular speeds along the roadway. So staff has recommended an additional cross-section uh, depicting this design as part of the master approval with the board. And then finally, staff has recommended some cleanup to the language uh, within the narrative portion of the materials related to affordable housing requirements to ensure that the affordable housing can be incorporated into the project uh, if needed. So staff did provide you guys with a draft motion uh, with conditions for your consideration. At this point, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, Jamel. Uh, the applicant like to approach, uh, for those in the audience who are watching at home, they may not know, we've, we did conduct a, a two-hour workshop on this um, proposal a few weeks back. So uh, this board has uh, clearly reviewed the material extensively at this time. So I'd ask the applicant to try to limit uh, some of this discussion to maybe some of the main points or whether or not uh, anything that staff is recommending at this time um, 
is okay with you, is not okay with you, and if so, why? Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you, everyone. It's good to see you all again. Um, I thought, hope you had a, a good holiday. Um, as, uh, as you know, um, we're before you again with the uh, second residential phase of the, of the Downs project. Um, we have held two workshops, which have been very constructive with you. Um, this is our, our second resubmission and uh, third iteration of the conceptual master plan. Um, so the, the purpose of tonight, tonight's review is to um, review and hopefully approve the uh, space and bulk standards um, that are set um, to allow for what we're conceptualizing here as a compact, um, intimate, highly walkable, transit-oriented um, residential neighborhood. Um, with some light, um, compatible light commercial uses also. Um, so we've set these space and bulk standards to be consistent with uh, phase one in the downs as well as surrounding development um, from residential to uh, other mixed use zones and projects in Scarborough. We've worked hard to address all of the uh, staff, staff and board's comments at this point in this latest master plan. Um, and we're looking forward to working with you through the subdivision site plan um, phase to uh, further refine the design intent further. Um, we are, so I think at this point, I think we've all looked at the plan um, and we had a chance to, to absorb and understand the intent. Um, I think we can probably jump right into staff comments and discuss what's, you know, what we what we might have some issue with or what um, is generally amenable to us. Um, overall, the staff comments um, seem very reasonable, and I think we can meet uh, most, if not all, of the recommendations. Uh, first comment is generally. Uh, I'll just go down the list if that's okay with the board. Uh, first comment is I would uh, just recommend if there's one that you want to just have the board focus on deliberating if you're comfortable with a certain set of them just try to tackle the ones that you think need some clarification further from this board okay yeah. okay um, so just to summarize so uh, the first comment um, is in regard to uh, building height limit we had proposed four stories um, and the, the staff had recommended um, somewhere between 45 and 60 feet setting a specific um, dimensional height limit and we've we've discussed that we're generally comfortable um, with 50 feet as as a height limit um, which will achieve four stories um, and be compatible with the adjacent uses um, next comment is uh, in regard to uh, street loaded garages um, staff recommended that the applicant provide 20 foot setback to garages for street loaded lots rather than the sidewalk, uh, the applicant is okay with this recommenda recommendation. We are okay with this recommendation um, for the uh, street loaded um, garage setbacks. The next um, comment was in regards to eliminating a bike lane along the Downs Road um, in exchange for widening the multi-use path west of the Downs Road. Um, again, we're okay with that. Generally, we'd like to um, work through that design in a little bit more detail through your subdivision. Um, so staff has, the next comment is, uh, staff has recommended uh, that we um, revise the uh, design and performance standards narrative to ensure that we're providing affordable housing within the project. Um, should affordable housing um, out of, outside of this phase um, not uh, provide that required um, percentage of affordable units? And we're generally okay with revising that language. So staff uh, also noted that uh, there are a number of remaining um, specific design related elements uh, for consideration. Um, that we're planning on working through at subdivision level. So it's just another um, level of design detail that we'd like to work through at a technical level. Um, otherwise, uh, we're happy to answer any questions or walk through some of the, the, um, 
design concepts and uh, look forward to your hopeful approval. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, we do have the opportunity for public comment on this item. If there's anyone here that would like to speak, please approach the podium and state your name. Seeing no public comment, I'm going to close public comment. I'm just going to open this one up generally to the board. Does anyone have questions or concerns on what you've seen here in the plans or anything that needs clarification? No? Go ahead, Roger. Uh, <clears throat> does staff have any, um, any problems with what he's recommending? Regarding um, the bike lane as well as the um, affordable housing. Um, what's your what's your question? Sorry. Does the staff he, um, as I understood it, you, you wanted to hold off on the bike lane on the Downs Road until subdivision. So I believe what we've uh, discussed with staff was um, providing a, a section or or an elevation looking at that condition with the expanded bike lane. As a condition of the uh, the approval for the for the final master plan document, we're okay with that. Okay, and the other the other was on the affordable housing, and is staff's um, concerned with those apartments across the way? Is that what what prompted that? Comment? I, th I think the concern, or it isn't really a concern, but the applicants proposing to use um, some units in a different part of the development to, um, you know. Or the 10% yeah. requirement. So the staff was just wants to make sure that if those apartments or development falls through, that they will build affordable housing within this development, and they seem comfortable with that approach. Yep. All right. Any other questions or concerns from the? Yes, Rick. Yeah, I couldn't win the war with you on burying all the, even the three phase coming in, but just for assurances. On the down road, your intentions are to bury them immediately when they hit um, the residential. We're not going to have any overhead wires going to a residential building. I would confirm with Dan, but I believe that's correct, yes. Yep. Okay, thanks. Jen? Um, I just wanted to clarify, I guess, both between the staff comment and the applicant that the, the comment about the bike lanes is... is rooted in the <clears throat> pavement width. I think it, the intent is to provide as little pavement as possible, right, for meeting the need. Um, because it looks like you would only actually need two more feet to make the, um, the sidewalk that you've shown equal to the 10 foot wide space. You sort of answered this anyway by t talking about working through it in more detail. I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't necessarily we were just not interested in having a bike lane, that it was just the intent was to keep the road as narrow as possible. Right, yeah, that's, that's what we understood is the intent is to, is to minimize the, the travel or the, the width of the road, yeah. Rachel, you all set? Yeah, I am certainly gonna have some uh, questions when we get into the site plans. Um, and as I'm looking at the overall phase, I guess the only thing that makes me slightly uncomfortable is you're still kind of encroaching upon the, uh, the track area. And I assume that, that uh, you are making plans to assure that um, you start really in other areas first. Correct. In terms of the development, mm -hmm. leaving that part to the end so that uh, we'll know what the connections actually will look like perhaps by the time by the time you get there So uh, it's just a little niggly worry in the back of my mind But um, I we think will, we good. will not correct connect directly into the track. Yeah <laughs> Well, yeah, you still have a street encroaching on sure. it on that area. So that that was a concern um, I'm as I said, I I will see what happens during the site plan. Sure. Thank you. Uh, that said, I do have a motion prepared here. <clears throat> I move to approve the conceptual master plan titled Town Center Residential Neighborhood proposed by Crossroad Holdings LLC as depicted on the plan set prepared by Aceto Landscape Architects dated 12-19-19 with the following conditions. One, work with staff to finalize the space and bulk regulations as noted in the staff review memo dated 1620. Two, an additional cross-section of the Scarborough Downs Road that includes a 10-foot wide multi-use pathway in the elimination of the westerly bike lane 
Three, revise the narrative materials to include language stating affordable housing may be incorporated into the town center residential neighborhood as necessary to meet the standard within the overall project should other phases of the project not provide the re requisite percentage of affordable units. That is the motion. Second. I have a second. Any discussion? Roger. Is, um, is number two, has that been decided? That was, that was the basis for your yeah, question. Yeah. So yeah. that's, I think, what they're saying is they're agreeable. The applicant is agreeable to that condition. Lying? Yes. Oh, okay. Then. Any other discussion? <clears throat> All in favor? Sort of is unanimous. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Next meeting, uh, next item on the agenda is Preston Properties, LLC, requests a site plan amendment for 29 Pleasant Hill Road, Assessor's Map U50, Map 30A. Jamel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So this project is located in the industrial zoning district uh, along Pleasant Hill Road. The applicant's proposing a 5,550 square foot building addition along with new stormwater and pedestrian infrastructure. So a few uh, minor comments. Uh, given that the proposed addition will clearly be visible from Route 1, uh, staff has recommended the applicant modify the design to include additional fenestration along the uh, elevations that are visible from Route 1. Uh, we've, staff has also suggested that the building elevations uh, match the existing building as much as possible. Staff has also suggested that the applicant add the 75-foot setback line from the high water mark along the Nunsuch River to ensure compliance with the town's shoreland zoning ordinance. And then finally, given the increase in impervious surfaces proposed on the site, uh, the applicant has noted that they submitted to Maine DEP uh, for their amended stormwater permit. So the applicant should uh, update the board on this process. That's all I have. Thank you, Jamel. Mr. Frank. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Sean Frank. I'm an engineer with Sebago Technics in South Portland. Uh, with me tonight is, uh, is uh, Elliot Chamberlain. Uh, and I think we'll talk a little bit about the uh, architecture if we can in just a moment. Uh, from a site plan perspective, uh, you may recall we were here in the spring uh, looking for the outdoor workout facility on the, uh, on the easterly side of the building and we did talk that we would be back in for the uh, proposed building addition on the westerly side, uh, which is what we are here for now. Uh, as you're looking at the site plan, the main entrance to the building in terms of pedestrian access to the building remains the same. Uh, you may recall that we actually uh, upgraded that area in coordination with uh, Harriman Architects uh, to provide some additional features and landscaping within that area. Uh, and again, that will be the one main public access into the building. Uh, so the addition, the only way in and out of the addition for the, for the public, if you will, will be uh, from the existing building. Um, and the, uh, the exit doors will be mainly for emergency access and during fires and those types of things. Uh, we did see the fire department and uh, Elliot has talked with them. Uh, we originally had proposed that the sidewalk would just extend up to the westerly side of the building to the, uh, to the doorway at that location. Uh, we will be extending it around uh, the perimeter of the total uh, addition to tie back into the existing sidewalk uh, to provide, uh, again, pedestrian access, if you will, for fire uh, back and forth from, uh, from the uh, exit doors. Um, in terms of the other things that uh, uh, Jamel had brought up, uh, uh, the elevation 11, if you will, is the 100-year uh, the floodplain elevation, which I'm assuming is what we would call the high water mark associated with the Nunsuch River. Um, we're at over elevation 30, so again, we're well more than 30, 75 feet, but we certainly will get that on the plan uh, for staff in terms of the 100-year uh, the floodplain elevation and the 75-foot setback associated with that. We certainly have no issue with that. Uh, we will update the parking uh, uh, requirement. Uh, you may recall it was actually used to be higher, as 180 square feet. I think now it's 350. Uh, a key point of this is we aren't adding any parking to the proposed development. Uh, really, this is to accommodate, uh, you know, the existing people that are there and staff uh, to provide additional uh, uh, types of amenities associated with uh, uh, the fitness facility. Uh, as always, these fitness facilities are things that are uh, uh, just like with the outdoor uh, workout facility on the other side. You know, they're always changing a little bit. We're just trying to provide those, uh, those additional uh, types of workouts uh, within the building itself. Um, DEP, we have submitted to DEP. I actually have a call into our project manager at this point in time. Uh, I don't have a, really a status update for us at this point. Uh, really, again, we're looking at it as a minor modification because it really is roof. Uh, what we are doing with the roof is actually capturing that within a roof drain system and directing it to 
um, basically a storage area. It's basically a vegetated depression that stores that first inch of runoff coming from the roof and then outlets it uh, uh, within a sheet flow uh, after that first inch of, of runoff is stored. Um, but again, we'll certainly coordinate that with, uh, with uh, this, the town engineer as well as DEP to make sure that we do meet uh, all the requirements associated with stormwater runoff. Um, we are not anticipating additional traffic associated with this. Again, it's really to accommodate uh, uh, the existing clientele, uh, which certainly, uh, you know, wanes and, and adds from time to time. But certainly, again, with the parking that we have out there, uh, we're certainly comfortable that uh, uh, we have adequate parking for the, uh, for the proposed addition as well as the existing facility and certainly don't see any uh, major impacts, really any significant impacts at all from the existing uh, traffic associated with that. Uh, again, Elliot's here a little and maybe just to discuss the... Uh, architecture a little bit. Um, the whole point of the architecture is to basically to fit in with the existing building. Uh, I know Harriman worked uh, with Elliot closely to make sure that, you know, that there was a, a continuity associated with that. Again, perhaps I can ask Elliot to just add a little bit to that. In terms of the, the windows uh, on the southerly side of the building, uh, that is the locker room area. Um, so we are not proposing windows, uh, just obviously so we don't have those windows within the locker room. But uh, with that, Elliot, I don't know if you wanted to add anything to that in terms of the elevation. Good evening, uh, Elliot Chamberlain. Um, like Sean said, in the interior <coughs> layout of the building, pretty much we have uh, brand new locker rooms. Um, so we couldn't, uh, due to that, the interior layout and the structural needs of the building, we couldn't put any, uh, the windows that we have in the addition are pretty much everything that uh, we can do. You'll see just to the right side of what is now the front door, you'll see the two, I think they're four by four square windows. Those are uh, the two, uh, the current locker rooms uh, that exist in the building. That's gonna become an athletic training room. Um, and we have equipment down that wall, so we were a little restricted as to what we could do also there. Um, so really, we. I realize it, it's probably not going to win some award, um, but we did the best we could to add windows where we could and where it made sense. Um, we tried to play, uh, as you can see with the siding, to break it up a little bit. We dropped the height down so it wasn't a continuous height. So we did try to do a few things so it wasn't uh, become an even bigger box than it already was, um, but we did have a lot of restrictions to work with. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I would conclude our presentation. Certainly be happy to answer any questions the board may have. Um, we do understand there are some, some minor issues to work out with staff as well as the final uh, DEP permit. I uh, would ask if the board's comfortable if we could receive uh, at least to get us on so perhaps next time we could just be on the consent item uh, associated with the planning board. Uh, and with that, again, happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we do have an opportunity for public comment this evening. If there's anyone here that'd like to speak on this topic, please approach the podium and state your name. Seeing none, I'm going to close public comment. Uh, I'm going to throw this one out just in general as well. If anyone wants to ask a question uh, for what it's worth, I'll weigh in real quick and say I'm personally okay with the architecture as presented, um, given the limitations you have based on the, the interior design and needs of the facility. Um, outside of that, um, I also would be comfortable with uh, moving this to a consent item on the next agenda once their DEP permit is received. And once staff, um, unless staff flags anything else for review. Um, anyways, anyone else would like to comment, jump in? Rachel. Yeah, as I'm <clears throat> looking at the plan, I'm, I'm looking at the office, and it seems to me that there might be uh, opportunity to put a couple of windows there to break things up. Uh, there's also the flex space, which I, I don't know what you've plan on doing with that, but that offers, does offer an opportunity to additionally break up that end of the, the building. The, uh, the uh, I'm assuming you mean in the new addition. Yes. Area. Uh, the office, which is where you see the two windows uh, currently just to the right of the blue siding section, um, right where the cursor is right now, um, th both of those windows are in that office. So we already have two windows there. We really didn't want to add a third one uh, or a fourth one around the corner, which is, I think, what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. It just started to eat up wall space within the office. But and it does offer an opportunity to break up the, but the long that, wall. But that there. end of the building is not viewed by anyone. 
that that is up against the wood line can't be seen from route one the parking lot or pleasant hill road all right um i have no problems uh, with this as a consent agreement at the next meeting thank you rachel <clears throat> any rick are those propane tanks buried yes, yes they are okay and we're gonna we're gonna move those uh to a new location i see that i just wondered yep. if we could protect it oh yes or make it look better if they were above ground Jenna Roger. All right. With that, we'll see you at the next agenda when you have your VP permit. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> next item on the agenda this evening is uh, Planning Board will conduct a public hearing to receive comment on the proposed amendments to Chapter 405 of the Zoning Ordinance relating to marijuana establishments. Jay? Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I know Larissa Crockett, our assistant manager, wishes she could have been here tonight to help present this as she's worked closely with our ordinance committee on it, but I will do my best to answer questions as I can. Um, so, Jamel, if we can go to the next slide there. Um, just, just a quick overview of sort of the past year and a half or more work by our ordinance committee sort of outlines the efforts they've put forward in terms of um, not just their meetings, but surveys and public hearings and public forums they've held on the issues. Um, and so, as I said, this has really worked that uh, for the last year and a half, our ordinance committee, which for everyone who doesn't, isn't aware is three members of the town council has worked on, um, been looking at considering local rules and regulations uh, related to marijuana. This is really in response to the changes in the state law. Um, and the state law talks about enables towns to opt in to certain activities with um, around marijuana um, uses um, both uh, adult use and medical um, and so barring actually opting in then it would not be permitted in town so um, through that uh, long work of the ordinance committee um, let's see we go to the next slide there Jamel really they they've come up with two companion pieces one is uh, has to do with amendments into the zoning ordinance, chapter 405, which is really what this public hearing is focused on. That's the planning board's regulatory responsibility is to hold the public hearing on the chapter 405 changes. But as a companion piece to that, there's a license ordinance, which I'm sure you know informs a lot of the effort that has gone on. So uh, I'm sure we'll probably talk some about that, but I did just want to sort of make that distinction um, that really, you know, per, per the uh, town charter, your role is to really look at that chapter 405. But again, recognizing that these two pieces go together. Um, so as I stated earlier, uh, you know, the town uh, has the opportunity, if it chooses, to opt in to certain activities related to marijuana use. And so this slide here is uh, intended to uh, indicate which activities and which zones the town is uh, at least the ordinance committee and i should mention this has gone to council for first reading which is why it's before this board now um, is currently uh, the language that's currently before the town really talks about allowing for cultivation facilities within the rf rural farming district um, the pine point industrial overlay district industrial district and light industrial district the other uses that are uh, being contemplated allow for uh, marijuana manufacturing and testing facilities within the um, RF district, and that's only as an accessory use to cultivation. The Higgins Parkway district, Pine Point Industrial Overlay district, the business overlay, uh, I'm sorry, business office research, Crossroads Plan Development, industrial and light industrial districts. So those are really the zones where these uh, uses are being contemplated. And, and in your packet, you'll see, you know, we have some definitions as well as some performance standards for some of the uses in the, uh, in the RF in particular. Um, let's see. Um, one thing I did want to note at this time is that the ordinance committee, during their dis deliberations, I wasn't at every meeting, but I certainly had a few. They did talk about retail, um, and at this point, the ordinance committee has decided not to opt into retail, and so that you you don't see that in the proposed language. Um, so I just thought folks would be interested in uh, knowing and hearing that. Um, so let's see, Jamel, if we go to the next slide, 
just real quickly, I, I, as I said, there's this companion piece with the license ordinance. Um, and this really talks about how someone, how a property owner um, can go about um, operating one of these um, businesses. And so it really talks about how all state authorization must be uh, in hand prior to obtaining a local license. So there's state licensing and local licensing. Um, really, uh, the, the, the license ordinance has a lot of performance standards around security, odor mitigation, operation plans, and those sorts of things. Um, and then further, the uh, ordinance committee has, um, has started with um, excluding marijuana establishments need to be at least 1,000 feet from any school or daycare. Um, so there's a few of the things that, again, I'm sure you've seen looking through the license ordinance. Jamel, if we go to the next slide, please. Um, as part of that license ordinance, um, all licenses are subject to town council approval, and there's a following a public hearing. And that, that actually happens on an annual basis. So um, essentially, people will have to be good operators if they're going to want to continue to maintain their business. Um, there are violation standards within the ordinance, sort of typical to what we see in most of our land use ordinances. And as I said a moment ago, the town does have a right to suspend or revoke a license if someone is not operating within those performance standards uh, set forth in that license ordinance. Jamel, if you just go to the next slide, which I think may be my last slide. So just so folks understand, um, uh, the process that we're, we're at right now, as you see, the first step was a town, town council first reading, which I believe occurred in December, if I remember my months correctly. Um, and that was first reading on the changes to Chapter 405 and the new proposed license agreement, which is Chapter 1018. We're here tonight for the planning board public hearing on proposed changes to chapter 405. That's our zoning ordinance. After this hearing on uh, scheduled for this coming Wednesday, so two nights from now, town council will hold a public hearing on both the proposed changes. And at that public hearing, council will presumably establish a second reading at a later date on, again, the two uh, items. And let's see. Um, so one of the things I did want to mention and put in our staff memo to planning board is at that first reading with, with council, one of the things I heard council ask this board to, to think about um, is really about um, concerns that they've heard from some residents about uh, marijuana cultivation in the RF district and how compatible that is with other um, potential residential uses both within the RF district or other abutting residential uses. Um, and so I think they're um, districts, I should say. And so that was really something that I had heard council ask for, th for this board to weigh in on. Um, so I will note also that um, the, because this is changes to land use ordinance and the long range planning committee, part of their charge is to look at land use ordinances. Uh, this did go to them for consideration at their December meeting, um, and you were provided with those minutes as well. Um, so I think that that's that's what I have for our presentation, and answer what I can. Thank you, Jay. I appreciate it. Uh, so at this time, we will conduct the uh, public hearing <coughs> portion of this. Uh, just a couple of quick ground rules for anyone that's willing to speak on this. Um, everything should be addressed to the chair. Um, we're not engaging in a back and forth debate. You know, make your statements and your opinions known. Be clear, concise. I'm going to limit you to five minutes. I do a little courtesy tap when you get 30 seconds left. That means wrap it up, okay? So um, with that said, uh, all you have to do is approach the uh, podium, state your name, uh, where you live, just so we can have it into the record. And uh, let's begin. Planning board members, my name is Marvin Gates and I reside at 423 Black Point Road. I'm commenting on the proposed amendments to Chapter 405 of the Zoning Ordinance relating to marijuana establishments, specifically Amendment 2 relating to the performance standards of cultivation and manufacturing facilities in the Rural Farm RF District, and Amendment 3 relating to the permitted uses in the RF District. 
With the town of Scarborough's GIS parcel viewer, I determined that there are at least six very nearby properties, one of them abutting my property, along Black Point Road between the Scarborough Beach State Park and the fire station at 341 Black Point Road that would be eligible for both marijuana cultivation and manufacturing facilities. What's more, along Spurwink Road from the fire station to the Cape Elizabeth town line, there are well over 35 eligible properties. Both of these nearby neighborhoods are very residential. With that in mind, I urge that the planning board recommend to the town council that the RF zones be eliminated from the proposed ordinance. And if that is not feasible, I very strongly urge that the planning board recommend to the town council that it review, create, and adopt overlay districts for marijuana cultivation and manufacturing facilities within the RF districts that are outside of the large and overwhelmingly residential areas of the RF districts. Also, I have heard it mentioned several times by town staff and others that it is important to treat marijuana the same as you do any other crop. If I'm not mistaken, that is a legal argument. And that being the case, I suggest that Chapter 1018, Town of Scarborough Marijuana Establishments <laughs> Licensing Ordinance, Section 10, Performance Standards for License, a, general, six, security, A through F, lists security measures that are not required for other crops. If the town has determined that for legal reasons it is required to treat marijuana the same as all other crops, I suggest that such unique to the marijuana crop security standards may not successfully survive legal challenges. In other words, I suggest that as written, it looks as though the proposed ordinance legally appears to want it both ways. For this reason, in order to avoid future expensive legal challenges, I respectfully <laughs> urge that the planning board recommend to the town council that it ask the town's attorney to review the ordinance for such potential discrepancies that may expose the town financially. Additionally, I urge that the planning board recommend to the town council that it consider limiting the total number of licenses issued for both marijuana cultivation and manufacturing. Given in the small area of Scarborough that I described above, there are approximately 50 eligible properties. The town should give some thought to how many such establishments, at the very least, may be properly inspected on a regular basis. Finally, I want to put to rest the idea, if I can, that my comments represent, on my part, a NIMBY bias. I urge you to please reconsider that the town of Scarborough voters, by a 52 to 52.4% majority rejected the state of Maine's 2016 adult use recreational marijuana referendum. Only the statewide passage of that referendum, not the town of Scarborough's voters, enabled the town of Scarborough to consider this, these proposed amendments. Therefore, I urge the planning board to recommend to the town council that if it continues to reject the will of the majority of its residents, and proceeds to consider the adoption of these proposed amendments that the town council at the very least do so with as much thought about the care for, excuse me, as much thought about and care for the will of its residents as the town council might be able to foster. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Alice from Bristol. I live at 6 Bayview Avenue. And um, first, I would also like to um, state that the 2016 Scarborough, in 2016, Scarborough voted no on the adult use legalization. <clears throat> and actually, it was by a wider margin than it was, the legalization was voted in statewide. I have followed the development of this ordinance since the first public information meeting in February where Attorney Saucier anticipated a marijuana overlay zone. It was determined an overlay wasn't necessary when the Ordinance Committee decided to opt out of retail sales. I respectfully disagree, as this draft zoning now allows marijuana cultivation and related manufacturing anywhere in the RF district, which includes much of the populated area bordered by Highwood Avenue, Black Point Road, and Spurwink Road. 
rural farmland is a misnomer here, as this area has evolved into really being residential. Odor is a major concern for not only myself, but many of my neighbors for both quality of life and health reasons for those of us that live in this area. If the goal is to pass this ordinance and treat marijuana the same as any other agriculture or farming, then I would respectfully ask the planning board to eliminate the RF district from this draft altogether with the idea that the RF district can then be, be revisited and rezoned spinning off neighborhoods within the district that have become primarily residential, perhaps into a new district, perhaps rural residential that exists in other towns. To put Scarborough in context with what, what other main municipalities are doing, according to the Maine Municipal Association's website, as of December 2nd, only 26 towns out of the 400 plus towns in Maine have adopted marijuana ordinances with Portland in the pending category. Uh, 21 of these towns have populations of under 10,000. The closest in population to Scarborough uh, are South Portland, Brunswick, and Auburn. And of the towns, uh, of the 26 towns that have adopted the ordinances, most of the, most of the zoning uh, primarily is in industrial, commercial, forestry, and farm, which is quite different than rural farmland, as I understand it, and most are subject to site plan review. Uh, to look at those that are closest in population to Scarborough, South Portland, whose ordinance I believe informed Scarborough's draft ordinance, only allows cultivation in commercial, light industrial, industrial, and non-residential industrial zones, as well as its shipyard district. It, its municipal zoning includes a rural residential district where marijuana cultivation is not allowed. Brunswick only allows cultivation in its non-residential growth industrial <clears throat> district. Auburn allows cultivation in its industrial, commercial, retail, and general business district, and agricultural <laughs> and resource protection district which is defined as open space lands so remote from existing centers of development. Again, I respectfully request that the planning board table the RF district from this draft ordinance, perhaps a good compromise between the business people who are eager to be licensed in Scarborough and concerned residents. Thank you very much for your time and consideration. Thank you. Hi, I'm Terry Kane, uh, 49 Gunstock Road. Um, thanks for uh, listening to perhaps the same story over and over again tonight, but I think it's one worth um, making sure that we cover the aspects of. I was at the town council first reading um, with some knowledge of uh, one side of the issue. And I heard that day some pretty good compelling arg arguments on each side of do we want to have anything at all to do with this or do we not? And uh, and it helped me understand um, you know, things I hadn't paid any attention to. There's a few of the current players in the industry are in the industrial areas. And I got talking with a couple of them after the meeting. And I said, fine. <laughs> I don't think any of us is meant to come across as anti-marijuana or you know, stuffy old folks or anything like that. But a couple of the comments I wanted to make are, are just in support of what we've already heard. Um, I want to reiterate the, the idea of the other coastal beach tourist towns among the people that depend on that kind of industry haven't gone anywhere near this. Um, and then secondly, uh, kind of on a theme, the idea of treating marijuana like other farming might sound right, you know, because it's a plant that grows out of the ground and people have made comparisons to hemp. And in some parts of Scarborough, it might be fine. But if not in the areas where the rural farming label is an obsolete and now inaccurate description of what, we, of what are now uh, residential neighborhoods. I have no idea when the last time we went and changed some of those uh, districts, but rural farming doesn't uh, 
as accurately as it, you know, a few decades ago uh, described what those are. I think what is right, instead of just sounding right, is to, to if we want to pursue rural farming as one of the areas where you can do this, let's wait until after the next time we go and work on uh, redefining zones. There are zones now that uh, are rural, as has been said, said before tonight, uh, that are you know, rural farming but are anything but. There's you know, hundreds of houses that have built on what used to be farms. So I, I don't think in those neighborhoods we want to be relying on the classification of, our, of rural farming. Um, what, what I'd like to uh, suggest and ask as a compromise, as, as has been done, let's leave the rural farming zones out of the picture right now. Um, if we decide later on, by, after we've rezoned, that rural farming is now more of an of a accurate measure of what's there and not uh, a detriment to neighborhoods, then you know, several years from now, we, we go after that. Um, my, my thought on the whole thing is to not be you know, in one side of, oh, we don't want any part of this uh, or, or, or the other, is let's do it intelligently. Let's, uh, let's pursue it in a way that makes the most sense. Um, if we eliminate rural, farm, rural farming, or if we, we don't want to necessarily do that forever, we just say for now until, anybody, until we have a time to uh, reclassify things that might be reclassified, I think it keeps us on the smarter side of the issue, which should reflect this. Opt in, but do it very, very carefully. And that's what I think uh, all of us have spoken to tonight of uh, caring for what really happens and what really matters. Thanks very much. Appreciate the time. Take care. Thank you. Hi, my name is Alicia Amrick, 3 Haystack Circle. Um, I don't at all mind being labeled an anti-marijuana old fogey. <laughs> um, because I am. <laughs> um, uh, my main concern is, um, once again, to re reiterate what my neighbor said, um, the elimination of the RF zones from this, um, be just because of the, the high density of, of, of single family homes and children who live in these areas now. Um, uh, reading through the uh, amendment, the chapter 405, um, it says under section, um, and that was both for the cultivation and the um, manufacturing. Um, under section eight, section two, it says um, that the, we've always been told that the structures would be enclosed because everyone was concerned with um, the odor. Um, and it says tension fabric shelters would be allowed. And I'm not sure. I don't know that much about tension fabric shelters, but it appears to me that if it's fabric, it's not going to be much as in the way of odor control, so that should be looked at um, if, if it is allowed in, um, in the industrial areas only. Um, and then under section Z number four, um, this is for the manufacturing. Um, I was under the impression, I think everyone was, that the manufacturing would also be in an enclosed structure, and it states here the marijuana manufacturing facility may be a freestanding building structure or outdoor location, or may be part of another building or structure, um, for an example, an area in a barn. And that's not what we understood the manufacturing would be allowed outside at all. So I was hoping that um, the committee could take a look at those two. Um, issues before moving forward with anything. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is, sorry, my name is Betsy Gleistein. I'm from 14 um, Long Meadow Road. And um, full disclosure, I'm a member of the town council, but I'm speaking only as a resident. Um, and I'm not speaking for the council. So um, I can address maybe a couple of uh, comments that were made tonight. Um, 
the, uh, thanks to one of my conversations with Jay, the rural farming zone was actually called residential rural farming zone until 2010 when they changed the name back to rural farming zone. I actually looked up the meeting when that happened after you and I had our conversation. And um, I had a friend who's a guru with the GIS data uh, pull some maps for me and match it up with um, zoning. And there's about 2,400 um, homes approximately in the RF zone. So um, we are hearing about the Black Point side, but um, my house happens to be on the other side of town. A lot of other people live where the former farms are. Um, and so just wanted to get those facts out there. Um, for me, looking at this has kind of been like peeling back an onion. Um, the more I look at it, the more it's very complicated. And I would like to acknowledge, you know, the good work done by the Ordinance Committee, um, as well as to acknowledge, you know, the responsible growers that we already have in town for medical marijuana. Um, we do have a number of those, and um, they are in appropriate districts, and um, uh, there's been uh, very few, if any, problems uh, around them, maybe a couple of odor occasionally, but that's all always seem to be resolved. Um, so I have a, a couple more problems than just besides uh, the RF zone, um, although uh, I, th I think people have spoken elo eloquently to that. Um, but when, uh, when I'm reviewing, um, when I started reviewing the changes, I started looking at existing 405 um, as well as the 405 changes. And I believe there's some potential overlaps and conflicts with agricultural definitions and performance standards and food processing and small batch processing definitions and performance standards in 405. Um, and I also think there's some questions that are not addressed related to farm stands and agricultural product stores. Um, so what, what kind of led me to this line of thinking um, was the definition of a small batch processing facility. And I did, I did bring this to some staff attention, but um, I won't read the whole thing, but it's a category of food processing facility or light industrial that uh, processor produces or sim symbols small lots of consumer goods, um, what's not in it, you know, but it includes craft brews and other things like that. And, and the last line of it is small batch processing facilities shall not include the production of processing of medical marijuana. So that was uh, put in, I think, in 2015. And so it got me to thinking, um, how have we crafted this overall set of ordinances and are we including the right things in the new sections under definitions um, and performance standards, and are we ex properly excluding them out of the other sections? Um, because I know as a planning board, some of the toughest work that comes in front of you is when we don't have an ordinance, when it's are maybe ambiguous, or we have language in a couple of different sections, and then you're left saying, well, wait a minute, it says this here, but it says this here. And sometimes a person can make a good, a good case. So, you know, when I'm looking at um, commercial agriculture, the growing of plants, including but not limited to forages, sod crops, grains, and seeds, fruits and vegetables, ornamental nursery stock, and flowers, primarily for sale, et cetera, et cetera, I'm thinking, well, does this section need to say not including adult use medical marijuana and not including recreation? use and so so we have that there we have it under an agricultural product store um, that is where you can open a retail store now we say we're not opting into retail but if you read agri agri about agricultural product sales within 405 you know it's not entirely clear to me that that's going to exclude um, any kind of retail from 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 those areas including manufacturing and the same with farm stand so I would say we haven't adequately addressed farm stand yet I mean you know that's um, you know it's food products related you know to what's being grown right there and the farm stands are subject to performance standards again I'm just not sure our language is clear yet to say okay you're gonna be a cultivator but you're not gonna be allowed to have a farm stand or are we are you gonna be able to oh am I that far out of time okay yeah, um, so um, so then my other major concern, so it, a lot of the things other people have said, so I'll leave out the RF, but is around the fact that edibles for manufacturing, so is going to be the primary use of manufacturing, uh, is to create edibles. The, the industry as a whole is going away from um, the, producing the flour 
and going towards edibles. And so I don't feel like, again, looking at 405 and the proposed changes, that we've adequately expressed what needs to happen uh, around food processing. We didn't even reference food processing in the new section related to manu manu uh, food manufacturing. And finally, last thing I'll say is there's a big concern with me, I, again, peeling back the onion, um, the, the, it uses uh, marijuana cultivation um, and indoor growing uses uh, a huge amount of electricity, 10 times as much energy per square foot as a typical office building. California indoor cultivation accounts for 3% of all electricity used in the state and almost 4% of Denver's total. Um, so, you know, I think there are rural areas, and I'm not saying it applies to Scarborough, but out on my side of the town, I don't know how good the grid is, and, and it, this is something that we need to consider. Um, and the marijuana industry itself, to their credit, is also looking at their carbon footprint because it's quite large. Um, and finally, in closing, I'll just say that, you know, I think going slow and taking this one step at a time is a really good idea. Uh, we only allow one garage sale per every six months. And that's um, actually, in a sense, one, because who has garage sales in the winter? Um, and so why do we do that? Um, it's to make sure we don't impact the neighbors with a lot of traffic coming to people's houses. And so how much more should we consider this impact, um, especially in that RF zone where we have you know, 2,400 homes, um, as well as protecting the, the, uh, the, the food production industry? So thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi, uh, my name's Eric Gleistein. Um, I had a bunch of notes marked down, but they've all been covered. So I'm gonna go off script a bit, um, just to say that um, we, many of us, I think, are taking extraordinary measures to try to distance ourselves from appearing to be judgmental about marijuana and its use. I also kind of noticed that most of the people here are of an age where typically judgment is well developed and I am uh, more concerned about the younger people and I've seen what marijuana can do uh, to young minds, people with a little less judgment experience. Um, this is something that we're able to opt in to and it doesn't mean that we have to. Um, I'm not in favor of this in our town. I accept that it is the will of the people of Maine. It's still federally illegal for all that that seems to mean these days. Um, so I'm not in favor of allowing or opting into this in Scarborough. If we do, I certainly support the removal of the RF zones and strict licensing uh, restrictions until we have more experience with this and we see how things work out. Thank you. Tom Falby, 140 Burnham Road in a rural farming district out by Broad Turn Road. Um, I think rural farming should be included in this. Um, in what is this here? Section 9 Y, a marijuana cultivation facility is allowed only on lots with a minimum lot area of 80,000 square feet. That's almost two acres. Um, and I, I mean, I'm a surfer, I go to Higgins Beach a lot. I go right by Harmon's Farm. I drive down to Scarborough Road. I, I don't think there's too many two-acre lots down that area. I, I don't know for 2,400 properties um, in total, but I, I, don't, I, I would venture to guess that there's at least two-thirds of those is less than two acres. Um, so for that for for that reason alone, I think that rural farming should be included in it for nothing less than the fact it's called rural farming. Um, the I, I will add I, I've been cultivating in this town since 2012, um, and the majority of, if not 
all the people who are long-term cultivators uh, on some level of scale have been at almost all of these meetings. Um, it's kind of like a Looney Tunes, you know, like mm -hmm. where, you know, the the rabbit clocks in and then the, I don't know whether it's the dog or whoever clocks in to chase the rabbit. So I clock in for the cultivation and these guys clock in for the, against the, against the development of the marijuana industry. Um, at every meeting, we're, we're familiar faces with each other, but um, the state standards are, are extremely rigorous um, th and, and daunting to, to go forward with for any rec license. Um, and once you get that, if you get that um, approval from the state, you have to come, then you come to the town and then the town has to have a special form that allows this applicant to go forward if the town approves them. Um, so I, I think um, concerns uh, uh, of things go running roughshod are, are um, might be a little overblown. It, it, it's, it's highly unlikely in my opinion th that there are very many people who are going to come from outside this town or from outside the state who aren't already established and bother setting up in Scarborough. It's not economically feasible. Why, why would I come to Scarborough where there's, there's limited um, cultivation space, there's limit, uh, the retail's not allowed, there's really nothing, and, and the property prices are high where I could go to Sanford or I could go north where things are even cheaper. So I don't think anybody is going to just come in and, and set things up. The, the, the things that are set up now are people who have been long-term invested in it and they've got a business established here now. They're operating now and they want to continue operating. But I think any fear of, of some conglomerate from California, Colorado, Washington, Oregon coming into Scarborough, Maine it is extremely unlikely just due to the economic factors. I mean, there's not, th there's nothing size-wise that would even be attractive. Um, and, and really, the, the one attractive thing has been eliminated, which is retail stores. Um, and then I, I will say that um, electricity usage in, in cultivation is evolving extremely quickly. LEDs are taking over the market for to take over 1,000 watts HPS lights, um, and they're finding vertical stacking of cultivation spaces are proving to be competitive with, if not more efficient than outdoor greenhouses. And, and that's, that's all about all I've got. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to comment at this time? Go ahead. Another two minutes. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, contrary to what Tom said, uh, if there was no interest in an expansion, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. Um, <laughs> expanding it to, to RF, it wouldn't even be an issue with anyone. Um, not. Uh, not that we're concerned with someone coming from outside the town, but the growers who are currently here are making money hand over fist. So there's no reason why the, our current growers wouldn't be interested in expanding their current operations here. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, would, uh, the. Uh, I think the, the problem with RF is not is not, certainly not our current growers, um, and even their expansion. Um, it it is probably because there are fire safety, security issues, those types of things. It is the small grower, I think, the people who want to jump into the business that would be more of a concern in terms of regulation that you know we can work on over time. You know, um, we're not saying no. We're just saying let's take it slow and be cautious. Um, and so, you know, I do want to give kudos to the folks we already have in town and the, the job that they've done. 
and you know like i said they are looking at electricity issues on their own and their carbon footprint and things like that but that doesn't mean we need to just jump in at this at this point so um, it, i think it's the the potential proliferation um, across the rf zone that is is a concern with mine with with the zone along with with the other problems in the ordinance that i cited thank you With that, I'm going to close public comment. And <clears throat> as a board, um, this clearly is a, a topic that could spin off into a much, bunch of different other sub discussions. And um, I think it's already been noted that our ordinance committee, our long range planning committee, and multiple other uh, boards and have in this town have spent time reviewing all of this information. And I don't think. Um, anyone here on this planning board wants to rehash all of the topics associated with this. So uh, with that, I, I really th would encourage this board to kind of try to stick to the land use portion uh, of the discussions. And uh, I'm actually even going to try to push this even a little bit further into a narrow section of topics by quickly just straw polling this board on various aspects of this. And I'll start, I'll start with by zone. Um, is anyone here concerned about allowing it in the industrial Haggis Parkway? Anything not currently labeled RF? Roger. Um, it, it seems to me, looking at the, um, get all this paperwork in, uh, all these different, um, you know, like the BOR and the HP zone and even the towns, <clears throat> we have a number of, um, residential areas that are very close to these zones. And I'm just not, you know, I thought Mr. Gates had a good idea about maybe the overlays, but I, I know that the, the Ordinance Committee or the Long, Long Range Planning Committee, one of them, discussed, and they didn't feel the overlays, like the transmission towers. Um, I thought that was a good idea. Did you want to add something, Jay? Yeah, I guess I'd just say, and I think maybe Mr. Gates mentioned discussion about overlays was, I think, at one point when there was a discussion about retail. I don't know that the Ordinance Committee spent much time, at least in the meetings I was at, discussing overlays for cultivation in RF districts or any of these districts. Um, I think once the, the discussion of retail went away, I think they really then focused on, okay, if we're not going to allow for retail, then what zones might we allow for these other activities? So I, I guess uh, just sort of responding to it sounds like um, what you had heard was that the ordinance committee talked about overlays for cultivation and these other uses, but really my recollection of those meetings was really about retail in overlays, not the other type of uses in overlays in that. So I don't believe that's a discussion that we really had much airtime. Uh, uh, just for a point of information, do I, I, I recall a town council meeting quite a number of months ago when this. I first heard this discussion, and uh, somebody stepped up from uh, down at Pine Point, where Snows is located. Is that you? And my impression was the town council was surprised that you were even there, because uh, is that? Excuse me, I'm, if uh, we're going to talk, you have to be in front of a microphone. People at home can't hear anything unless there's a microphone in front of your face. So, uh, and then that just. Try to limit the back and forth if we can, no, but I'll just please, address, I'll just Chris, thank you. The, thank you. Our neighbors were surprised that we had over 14 growers in our building because we've never had an odor problem. That's, that's, that's all. Yeah, and, and I guess the point, okay. Can you also just uh, let us know your name and for the record? And My name is, uh, is Shelly Pelletier from 10 Snow Canning Road. Thank you, Shelly. Um, I guess the, um, the point I was going to try and make is, do we have any idea how many um, marijuana growers? I guess, like, you're a private grower. Are you? Tom? Roger. Yeah. Stop talking to the audience. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get a, to get a clarification as to who's talking. That's all. Um, do we have any idea how many are... Um, people are growing or doing anything with marijuana in the RF zone in this town. 
I'm not aware uh, of him. Um, I'm not sure if the Ordinance Committee and Larissa Crockett dug into that level of information or not. I, I mean, yeah. could there be many? I mean, it's, I, there are there are there are many. I mean, I do know that that you know that there um, there's significant growth. Oh, did you say in the RF or RF? Oh, in the RF. I I apologize. Um, yeah, I don't know how much is happening in the RF. Okay, and we have a handle on on the. Um, the number in the commercial districts is that correct uh when you say we have a handle i guess i don't know what you mean well, by that. i mean do we know how many i know we have a cluster down there at, yeah. uh, at pine point do we have any anywhere else yes oh, we do yep. okay in, in many know. of the industrial areas in yeah. town so the, the real question though with that i wanted um some guidance from this board on is whether or not there anyone on this board is really taking issue with what you've read here, knowing full well that this board has no control over whether or not any of this goes through. We're here to advise. <clears throat> Does anyone on this board have an issue with limiting our discussion this evening to specific zones, such as an RF zone, basically saying, look, if it's going to happen and it's gone through all these subcommittees and the council's going to take a vote on this, uh, we don't really need to talk about its impact in an industrial zone. That's not necessarily, unless you wanted to provide specific feedback on that, that's what I'm really asking. Can we limit our discussions to RF? Or did you, did, does this board really want to just, let's see where this conversation goes? Because I kind of kind of hate the idea of a free fall conversation on no. this because we don't need to rehash two years of ordinance committee work. No, I agree with that. It, it's just that. I, I'm just wondering whether we really have a, a good handle on how many people are, are, are participating in this activity. That's all. And if and if we if there's quite a few, maybe considering an overlay district within the Arab zone may make some sense. Or all no. zones, but huh? or all zones is if yeah. you do an overlay, it's yeah. going to include. So you didn't want to talk about all zones. <laughs> That's, well, that was the question, is should we have that, that first because, yeah, Jen. I have a question. Do um, any staff have, can any of you speak to knowledge of a history of complaints or documented problems or requests or anything like that from people calling in with complaints about this type of use in any zone, but in particular the in just the non-RF zones at hand. Um, there have been some complaints in the industrial district or other areas where gr growing is currently occurring indoors, um, but for the most part, those are then resolved. Um, there are sort of air handling units. I'm not aware of any pervasive sort of ongoing complaints that aren't addressed. Um, there are. Um, so yeah. Sense. Thanks. So, with with that, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick my toe in the water here. Okay, um, I, I put a lot of thought into this. How do you how do you best tackle a subject that can be this broad and 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 really very detailed at times? Um, I almost hate to liken it to like a Supreme Court decision. I I would like to make a recommendation to the council. All right, and I have my thoughts on what that recommendation looks like. But I also accept that I am one member of a, an entire board here. So perhaps there is room for a majority, because I, I highly doubt we'll even end up in a consensus recommendation to the council, but maybe an overarching, look, we kind of have a consensus opinion on something and maybe we have a dissenting opinion. Let the council take those for what they're worth. Because I doubt we're gonna end up, I could be wrong, uh, I doubt we'll end up with a, a full on consensus of all recommendations to make to this council. So with that said, I'll, I'll just begin with my little bit, and maybe you guys can chew it apart for what it's worth. How does that sound? Start there. Got to start somewhere. <laughs> All right. So I, I'm going to make a couple points. Um, I think, one, thank you, everyone, for coming out tonight. And the input uh, is valuable. I think it's uh, definitely a topic. <coughs> We're all very concerned about it at one level or another, no matter what side of the issue you're on. Um, I will say this. The residential farm, I believe it's been pointed out many times, uh, it's it's, it's not, I'm sorry, it's rural farmland. It really is residential. Um, there's no doubt about it. We've got a lot of families, a lot of neighborhoods. Uh, and, you know, I would, I would say that we're not 
necessarily quote unquote being forced into a position to start just blanket accepting this business everywhere in town. I, and I and I don't think we need to to take that bite of the apple all at one time. I think there is room here for maybe let's see how this works in other places. Uh, which kind of goes back to my original question of you know, do we really want to talk about industrial areas? I don't know what the level of comfort of other board members are if this is in a commercial or residential area. Um, I'm sorry, commercial or industrial area versus it being near families. And I'll point out just some, one column, I, I, I find it ironic that uh, there is a tendency for some people to refer to this just as another crop, um, but yet we have, uh, I believe one of the other owners picked up on this as well, we have a section in the licensing ordinance that's requiring locks on and bars on windows. And, and I don't know any tomato growers that need to put locks and bars and keep safes and security cameras. Uh, and and that's, that's my concern. Don't, don't try to tell me that this is like any other crop because it's really not. Um, there's, there's a desire for it. And if it ends up near our residential areas, near our neighborhoods, there is a potential pack, uh, impact to those neighbor, neighborhoods. There could be home value impacts that we don't know about. Um, somebody could lose the value of their home. You could be close enough to residential. The, the licensing calls out uh, in it that it shouldn't be within a thousand feet of a school, a daycare facility, or anything like that. But what I do know is that my kids spend more time at home than they do at their school. So why are we protecting the proximity to a location where my kids spend less than 50% of their day at, but we won't protect the neighborhoods they live in? So. Um, to, to, and I think this goes back to your first point, Roger, which is you're not sure if the zoning on all of these districts meets up with what the idea of keeping facilities like this a thousand feet away from neighborhoods, school districts. You can actually be located in an industrial area and still be within a thousand feet of a, a development with, I don't know, 100 kids running around. You, you could still have that zoning that abuts each other. So all of these, I've got a whole, page of chicken scratch notes here um, and I hate to bore everyone because uh, I'm sure everyone's heard it all but my um, I had two concerns going to this one the RF but two, the CPD district um, being brand new to us uh, the crossroads development I would um, I, I would look at it and say a blanket acceptance uh, as part of that zone concerns me a little it is brand new I would I would prefer I know this will come out my kind of my bulleted recommendations, but I would prefer them if they're going to consider putting some sort of facility, cultivation facility, manufacturing facility, that it has to be limited to the innovation district. Uh, there are going to be other commercial areas within that project, and I don't know where their proximity and where they're going to end up land use wise would be at this time. But I would say that one of the, one of my recommendations is that in the CPD district specifically, it gets limited to innovation way. Yes. On that point, Mr. McGee, if I may, it, it is actually limited just to the uh, Innovation District area. Um, so where you'll, is that? Um, where it's listed as permitted use, you'll excuse me while I thumb through. <coughs> so I'm on uh, under number seven, amended, amendment to section C, crossroads. It's, yes. it's listed as permitted use 55 and 56. Yes. In the crossroads district, there's about currently six or eight uses mm -hmm. that are probably run from about number 44 to currently 54, maybe a third to 10, whatever the number is, yeah. that oh, fall yeah. under a provision that say these uses are only allowed in the innovation district. So these two so it's uses- it's excluded off of that list of uses. Nope, it's being added to the list of 10 to a dozen uses that can only occur in the innovation district component of the CPD. Okay, so on the rest of the master plan, that it this could, is not this altering. would not be allowed in any other piece. Thank you. See, so. somebody else is already on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, no, I appreciate that. You no, know, it doesn't mean that's yeah. the right approach. I'm just saying that Correct. is the approach that's in there. It, it is what, um, <laughs> it, it did come to mind when I saw that, yep. just on the general, that it was going to be allowed in the CPD area. Uh, I didn't have that breakdown. Of yep, I appreciate areas. that. Yeah, yeah. you have to do some digging and it, it's, I understand. Um, so anyways, understand. long story short, uh, the chair needs to be put on a timer. Um, my, my recommendation to the council would be this, uh, that all references and inclusions of the RF zone be removed um, and we encourage council to refer 
this back, uh, the RF portions of this back to the Long Range Planning Committee and or Ordinance Committee for further review. I don't believe there's a reason to rush into uh, any of this uh, in that zone at this time. I believe there are a lot of lessons that we should have learned from the cell phone towers where we thought we were doing the right thing and limiting size and distance and things like that and come to find out you know, one of the, one of the areas is a marsh and yet I think we should learn from it. I think we should, I know it's been two years in the making, but maybe with this needs a little bit more time and a little bit more thorough outlook. Um, I did have a chance to read the minutes of the last, uh, committee meeting that was held on this and, um, I was left wanting, I think for a more thorough review, um, is what I would say on that side. I would recommend that, um, I would recommend the council that they adopt a hard separation and buffering standard, regardless of what zone it is in, uh, would be one of my recommendations. So a thousand feet, no matter where you are to any neighborhood, school, anything like that. That would be one of the recommendations I would make to them to consider. Um, I would also recommend they correct and clarify the following items in the licensing agreement, which I know was not necessarily quote unquote part of our, um, review here this evening, although as Jay has pointed out before, that they kind of go hand in hand, it's hard to avoid. Um, one of them being the perform performance standards. Um, this is required setbacks, uh, section 10, number four, required some setbacks. Um, and I think that goes hand in hand with my recommendation, which is I would prefer to see a hard setback regardless of zone. Uh, section 10A3 refers to um, the def definition in section 5L, I'm pretty sure this is a typo, and it should be 5K. Uh, it speaks to how close they can be to schools and child care facilities. However, if you look at 5L, that is not the section you find that language in. It's 5K. So I think that's a cleanup note. Um, so I think those are the two major points in the licensing portion that I would encourage the council to clean up at least from my perspective. And then uh, based on also uh, comments we received here tonight that I wasn't aware of, uh, I would encourage the council to quickly review the definitions found in 405 to clarify uh, certain activities where uh, marijuana may or may not be uh, ambiguous as to whether or not it's allowed use under certain definitions. I think that's a good clarification that should be made for jumping into some of this. Um, and that is the end of my recommendations. <laughs> so there's your jumping off point board. You like it, you hate it, go. Um, Rachel. Sure, um, I'm gonna reflect on one of the comments that one of the gentlemen made. Um, about old fuddy-duddies uh, sitting here trying to figure this out. I do remember most of the 60s uh, <laughs> when I was in college, so I just enough said about that. Um, I, I'm glad that the question of the CPD district uh, was cleared up. That was one of the questions that I had. Um, I, I guess my, my concern about the RF district is broader and at the same time, we're asked to look at something that's, that's more narrow. As Scarborough grows, uh, the folks who have spoken to us today are, are quite accurate in that the rural districts um, are being uh, built on. And there are more and more houses in those areas. I, I think that becomes a, an issue for the town to look at as a whole apart from the question of marijuana uh, growth or cultivation or processing. Uh, I took a look at this as um, rather narrow and the question for us, for me became, do we do a site plan review in the RF district? And I came down upon the, the side of yes, not that we don't put marijuana or allow marijuana in the rural district because I think that's not the purview of the, the planning board. It is the purview of the town council. Uh, but I think 
if we are given some very clear guidelines for determining what meets appropriate standards for marijuana cultivating and processing in the RF district or in, as in any other district, that serves the, some of the concerns that folks have raised. So that a site plan review that includes buffering, that includes security, that includes the type of building that can be put in, that includes the type of hood and odor mitigation. Uh, we haven't taken those up in rural districts before, but I think it's time that we do take a look with this as a special crop, and I do see it as a special crop, separate from all of the other growth that occurs in uh, rural districts. I think uh, as I looked at the licensing, it seemed to me that one of the things that I got a little uh, confused by was that uh, in order to get a license, a manufacturer uh, for the RF district or a processor is required to provide the town clerk with a sketch plan or a plan of the f proposed facility in order to uh, meet the licensing requirement. That's an interesting thing to do, but without the review by the planning board to assure that that plan and that sketch meets all of the requirements, that the it would be necessary to provide safety, um, mitigation of odors, uh, security, um, screening, buffering, uh, everything else that um, we will take a look at during site plan reviews, that seems to me to be wasted. A wasted requirement if it hasn't come first or before a decision is made for a license has not come before the planning board for a full review. Uh, and as you might have noticed, we don't move particularly fast. Um, you saw us pass today the uh, um, a master plan for the the downs that's taken us six months, perhaps more. The first, we, we really worked very hard to ensure that whatever is built in Scarborough meets the needs of Scarborough, meets the design standards, meets the ordinances. And I think in terms of the marijuana processing, uh, we can do that. now whether it should be in the RF district, I'm not willing to weigh in on that. Uh, I do, however, think that if the current ordinance allows it, uh, if it is indeed a agricultural product, we still do have a role to ensure that it is done, the, the manufacturing uh, is done appropriately, safely, uh, and within all guidelines and with due deliberation by the planning board. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Jen. Um, I just have a couple of questions. Appreciated the comment about um, pointing out that the minimum lot area mm -hmm. proposed was for 80,000 square feet. And just in listening to the conversation, I pulled up the zoning map for, for Scarborough. And the, the RF zone covers quite a bit you know, we have a lot of RF zone. Um, so I would just be curious about how many, I know there was a, a bullet point given for the number of single family homes that exist in the, that zone, but I would be curious what percent or the number of properties that exist in that zone that exceed that requirement. So what, where is this, where is it even possible? Um, you know, it, it, I'm not going to I'm not going to guess on a percentage, but it's pretty significant the coverage um, you know that we have in the RF zone, particularly west of um, the Turnpike. And so, I, just in just hearing I, a lot of the discussion makes a lot of sense to me and resonates to me. But I would just be curious um, what what are we even talking about in terms of uh, possibility? I guess so. So for um, properties over the 80,000 square feet, that's only proposed for the cultivation, but then when the proposed language under manufacturing actually limits uh, caps, 
manufacturing at 2,000 square feet of gross floor area. So that's that's building space. Um, and so those two things sort of seemed a little just, just different to me. Um, so that would obviously encourage smaller, smaller space. I mean, 2,000 square feet, a garage, you know, a two, two big garage roughly. I'm just ballparking, trying, trying to picture what that, what that space would look like. I'm guessing that um, a usage like that would be easier to, so there would be more of those potential uses either existing today or those, or in the future, those that type of use could exist um, more frequently throughout the RF zone because it's a smaller, it's a smaller footprint. Um, and so I was just curious about why the, why it was written that way, for manufacturing with a max on floor area versus, uh, for cultivation, a minimum of land area. So I could. To that, um, that really came from the direction of the ordinance committee when they um, identified that as a starting point they wanted to talk about cultivation like other agricultural uses. So the 2,000 square foot for um, for I'm sorry the terminology is uh, for the manufacturing facility really stems from performance standards we currently have in the R um, in the RF district for commercial agricultural product stores we limit those to 2,000 square feet. So it's really sort of picking through those performance, existing performance standards for uh, agri commercial agricultural uses and applying those. Um, so that, that was... The like use to like use. Yep, and yeah. again, at the direction of, you know, as a starting point of, well, let's look at, at as agricultural. And so that was the, again, the starting point of the discussion. Okay. Can I piggyback on that real quick? Mm -hmm. I don't think that's clear for what it's <coughs> worth. It says the facility shall not exceed 2,000 square feet of gross floor area. Mm -hmm. And I know when you get into the nitty gritty details, does that actually mean canopy? Is uh, that actually, that that is just referring to the manor, marijuana manufacturing <laughs> facility. The so manufacturing the cultivation. cultivation facility is the standards and why. Thank you. And the canopy there is not addressed in the zoning performance standards. That is left to the licensing right. standards. So in the in, in the zoning in Chapter 4 or 5, there is no restriction on canopy per se. That's taken up per the licensing ordinance. So that's why those companion pieces need right. to be talked about together. So, so just to continue to clarify, yeah. if this was housed with another building, you could have a 10,000 square foot building, 2,000 square feet of it would have to be set aside for uh, the, the manufacturing portion. The other 8,000 could be canopy. Is that? Potentially. Okay, that's what I wanted to clarify. Yep. Okay, thank you. Um, other questions that I had were about any re requirements for energy offsets. I'm certainly not an expert in this industry at all, but um, appreciated comments as, as a lot of industries are experiencing, you know, improvements in energy uses for all sorts of things. Um, but I, you know, I do think that knowingly allowing a use that's a demand on any part of the um, system, the grid, utilities of any type, um, if there was anything that we could do to talk about that, and it's probably part of the, um, you know, could come up as part of the site plan review. So what are you doing to help offset some of the, um, the demand that a facility of a particular size would create on both the electric grid, but also any other um, water, sewer, wastewater, that type of thing. Um, so I guess I, I kind of have a, I'm struggling between excluding the <coughs> RF zone at this point just because I, I feel like I'm not really clear on exactly what that would limit at this time based on the size. But I'm guessing that's a pretty simple GIS query that I'm just not able to do. <laughs> 
Thanks, Chad. Are you ready? Um, <clears throat> on the um, first of all, I, I just want to mention that all the people in town who have been working on this, I respect the effort and everything that's gone into this, but it just seems to me that this is there's still quite a bit that has to be con considered, and um, I don't know anything about this stuff at all. So. Um, the, the marijuana cultivation facility, minimum lot area, 80,000 square feet. Can I ask for the chair, that gentleman right there? Tom, I didn't get your last name. Felby. Felby? Yes. Okay. You want to go up there for a second? This is a penetrating question. <laughs> and while, while he goes to the podium, I just want to make mention and be clear that the 80,000 square foot limitation is only in the RF. Yes. In all the other yeah. zones, um, just just so we're clear right. on that element, that all the other zones, the the whatever the lot size is in the BOR or in the industrial is what would apply. So okay, yeah, um, that. it says cultivation facility, minimum lot size eighty thousand square feet. Uh, is that do you own more than eighty thousand square feet, or are you operating on more than that? Yes, one point nine six acres. Okay. But that's not where I'm operating. That's where I live. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I guess I go back to my what I said earlier. If, if we had an idea, I, I don't know how extensive this is, and whether we're being too liberal in terms of allowing this. Uh, I guess that's where I'm at. I'm just. If you're if you're talking about trying to get a handle on the number of people growing marijuana in the town of Scarborough, the Scarborough Police Department can get that information for you and tell you the exact number of people that are registered caregivers. However, that is specific to the medical marijuana program only and not to anything having to do with adult use. Trying to say that the two are systems running in parallel is completely misguided because the, uh, the what's expected of a medical marijuana caregiver and what's expected of someone in the adult use or the emerging adult use program is totally different. And Sorry, public comments over. And, and, yeah, and I guess, and I think you can. Yeah, yeah thank you. I really need to. Okay, yeah, thank All you. Right. The, the only other, other comment I would make is about the buffering. I mean, we have a lot of areas in town where we, like I said earlier, where we have now residential, and it would be buffering. You know, um, it would be right up against all these other commercial zones. So, that. that you know, I. Rick, do you want to go in and I'll, I'll chime in one last time too to see if I can try to bring this somewhere? Yeah. When I came here tonight, I was for trying to see if we could develop a compromise and find if there's RF zones that we could say this is allowable. And in certain RF, for example, um, I think Jennifer, you said it west of Route 1. Would that be okay to have marijuana cultivation on that side versus um, on the coast side? But as I listen to uh, public comment and I listen to my colleagues, um, I don't want to move too fast. Or I would hope that we don't move too fast on this when it deals with the RF zone. Um, I'm concerned about the load growth. If you start getting into these rural areas where our lines are already constrained and, and even though you may only have a 2,000 square foot growing uh, facility cultivating marijuana, um, I think somebody mentioned the stacking of these products now or this um, plant. Um, the LEDs, yeah, they're great, but now you're having a lot more LEDs because you have them stacked. And the more LEDs you get stacked, the bigger the HVAC unit needs because those things generate a lot of heat. And um, it, it is a astounding at the projections of the load growth that the marijuana industry could be bringing to Maine. And I don't know if it's from outside people or those that are 
currently living here. But that is of concern, um, particularly in the RF areas. Uh, I didn't realize there was that many homes now that are incorporated into the RF. I heard the words, you know, can we do rezoning? And is there something in the future about rezoning uh, the RF districts? Do we know? Um, yeah, so I guess what I would say, and it was brought up earlier, um, the, the town council working with the long range planning committee and this board back in 2010 did a, a pretty extensive effort in rezoning the RF district to really try to um, enable and preserve the uh, commercial agricultural, the traditional commercial agricultural, I guess, as I would call it back during the 2010 discussion as we're working through the revised comprehensive plan that remains a goal of the community to preserve and to enable the, the continuation of agricultural um, uses in town. Uh, but that's not to say that, you know, revisiting where and how that's appropriate and whether it's based on this discussion or based on a, a broader discussion. I think maybe as Rachel was saying, um, that there's, there's room for that, but, um, all right, that, that's helpful, Jay. I appreciate that. Um, another point on this is, and I'm certainly not trying to indicate I'm pro or against. I'm just trying to be reasonable here, and, and I don't think we have enough performance standards uh, in incorporated here. Um, I would hope that maybe we could define some sort of performance standards in odor mitigation, there's ozone, there's all kinds of water-based uh, ways in which you can mitigate um, the, the odor. And I think we have to see some demonstration of that into um, the facility if, if we as the planning board would then be uh, doing site plan reviews. <coughs> I think we, we certainly need to take that in into consideration so I think there's some performance standards that we might want to look at a little bit deeper and incorporate additional performance standards to make this work and it may not just be in the RF district uh, areas I think there's maybe some performance standards in some of these other zones that we might want to consider uh, and I guess I'll leave it at that for now Thanks, Rick. I think you, uh, you segued nicely into where I wanted to kind of tie this up because from just generally what I've heard is I don't think what's being presented to us is complete enough for anyone on this board to be comfortable with what we're seeing at this time. Is that a fair assessment? That it's fair for me. Whether it's more information, more detail needed, what's come to us at this point in time we do not feel is, is completely is, – is adequate enough for us to feel comfortable with it. That being said, the council, uh, as Jay highlighted, was very <laughs> interested in our opinion on the RF zone specifically. Now, whether or not you feel comfortable or uncomfortable with everything else in here, do we have a quick straw poll on whether or not that council, based on what we can tell, should pursue RF standards Well, the, everything west of the turnpike is RF, right, just about. I know this. So that would work. <laughs> if you remove that, you, you remove half the town. So that's where I go back to the overlay concept. It might make some sense. So, I, I mean, I think, I think if I were a counselor, what I would want to hear from somebody is saying they're either advising we tackle this, we refer it back out, we, you know, what are we really recommending here? And I think... Um, I'll stand by my original assessment. If they're going to move forward with any of this, they should remove the RF for now and refer it back to committee, whether it's the ordinance committee, whether it's the uh, long-range planning committee. But I don't think at this point in time, I don't think we have enough. I don't think, I don't think we need it either, but that's just a personal opinion. But I'm not sure it needs to be pursued at this point in time, and there's no reason for I, I don't see any reason why that has to be done now, considering... There seems to be a willingness to include it in other portions of town and other districts. Um, I, I think it's important to um, 
acknowledge that the people who were in doing anything with this industry right now, I mean, as far as I know, just as an average citizen, I haven't I've have not heard any problems with anybody doing working in you know in anything to do with this industry. So I don't think our our problems are a reflection of on them at all. Okay, um, we just need further clarification on some of these issues. And I, I think it's also probably important to note that the ones that have been operating in town are still operating. Yes. Mm -hmm. Nothing they're considering yeah. here really, quote unquote, impacts our current business owners. They might even be operating next to your house and you don't know it. Uh, <laughs> 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 it does go noticed when it is around. Um, so does that seem fair? I'm trying to get us to a, some somewhat of a decent recommendation to this council. Does it seem fair to say at this time the RF probably should not be pursued I agree in with this that. format? I disagree. I think the RF <clears throat> should not be excluded at this point. Um, we have no idea what people might have done in terms of purchasing prospective sites. We've been very careful in the past to listen to be sympathetic to the concerns of landowners who have a right to do something with their land that is currently legal. Uh, and um, the town council is proposing it, that there be marijuana cultivation and processing in the RF zones, absent the ability to change, um, really review the whole RF problem. And I, I think we do have a, a problem with the RF because of the growth that we've seen in the town since 20. 10, the last time it was reviewed. Um, <clears throat> but I think at this point, um, I would not be prepared to say, therefore, we must wait. Uh, I would not take the RF off of the uh, off of consideration for um, cultivation and proper, uh, processing. Uh, can we just, um, instead of removing the RF completely, can we just refer back to the um, Ordinance Committee and just say we, we feel that the RF requirements should be tightened up further? I think the recommendation is, is they remove it until they can send it back for more. Right. Right. I mean, if they're, in, if they're exactly. really intent on pushing forward with allowing this process in the community, where, you know, do they want, I guess the question is really for the council, do they want to hold up the entire process to deal with RF, okay. or do you separate it out? and let the remaining go through while you work out issues with RF. And, and anybody in the current RF work with any of this stuff would be grandfathered? Uh, anyone that's under a medical caregiver facility yeah. right now is still operating in the town. Yeah. It's whether or not this is going to go as uh, manufacturing or other facility that, was, that would be new to the town. There's, they put a moratorium as of December 2018, or is it, I'm sorry, December So, um, Jen? I, I think that the RF zone should be, I think additional information is needed to clarify that. Um, if it's the ordinance committee's choice to, or the council's choice, like you mentioned, to proceed with the other, <coughs> moving ahead with the other, other zones. Um, that's fine, but I, you know, I just, I kind of, 
I guess just at a at a basic value, I agree with Rachel that this is this is our these are our, this is our farm zone. So if we're not going to allow the cultivation of an agricultural product that grows outdoors in fields in an area like this, um, I'm just I'm not really sure. You know, we we have these smaller zones where it might be allowed, but just sort of holistically in the spirit of rural farming, it seems appropriate to me. With with the caveat that I'm definitely sensitive to um, offsets and you know buffering to particular uses and development that may already be in place. Um, you know, I don't think that a any of the the subdivision tracks that we have in in these in this zone are very unlikely to ever be returned back over to farmland. So if it's, if it makes sense to have sort of a, a thousand foot buffer like you were talking about to neighborhoods in the same way, or um, neighborhoods in the same way that we would to schools, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, but I think that it should just be investigated further to figure out, to, to define some of those things. So I think we all kind of weighed in, unless somebody else wanted to add something further to the discussion. No? All right. Uh, so I'll, I'll uh, I don't even think you need a motion. I'll make a recommendation that uh, the town council uh, refer um, any discussions or clarifications regarding the RF zone in particular back to ordinance committee or long range planning committee for further uh, tidying up, for lack of a better term. That's, that's, that's going to be my recommendation. Who is in favor of that recommendation? I, I, I need some clarity because that motion really doesn't address the issue of. We're not making motions, we're making recommendations. Oh, well, the, the recommendation doesn't really address the issue of when it's referred back. To, we're just giving the council a recommendation of what they should do. They're going to do what they want to do. They want to hear our opinion on what we think should happen with RF. That's really why so, they brought it to us. Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm trying to figure out. Um, I started to get confused partway through that recommendation in terms of what it actually was, was saying. My so recommendation could you, could you is that it's again? not quite ready in its current form and that the <clears> council <throat> should consider referring this back to either ordinance or long-range planning committee for tidying up. So whether or not they kill it outright, whether that goes back into committee for another two years, whether they sit on it for a year to see how the rest of it all works out before they implement it in RF, that's really a council decision. What I am really trying to point out here is I don't think it's ready from what I see here now. What the council does with it next, I think, is really in their court. And just for clarity for staff, mm. you're, at this point, you're focused on the RF? Just the RF at this point. That's correct. So that's my recommendation. And, and that includes the growth and processing. Yeah. The cultivation and processing. Okay. All right. So that would be uh, the recommendation. Who is in, was that clearer after the explanation? Yes. All right. That's who's in favor of that recommendation for dissenting. Okay. So I show that as a recommendation. Are there any other recommendations this committee would like to make to the council on any other portion of this at this time? Yeah, Rick. Yeah, and it goes back to some of the performance standards. Um, I really <coughs> think we should have some sort of requirement to say that if you want to build these types of facilities in these other zones, that you're going to have to demonstrate through an energy model that it is going to be um, um, equal to or less than the EUI of the national average of marijuana grow facilities. And when I say EUI, I mean energy use intensity. There's generally for sectors, there's um, an average of what per square foot uh, a facility like this should, should be performing at. And I think we should ensure that the facilities are not above the, the national average on those energy use. So that would be, for an example, that's one performance standard that I think we should, should have in all zones. 
um, Would, keeping in mind that if even in the RF, if you're going to have some grid constraints, it may not be, it's not on the backs of one person, it's on the backs of all our rate payers. And um, I'm concerned about that as a whole community. Um, so that's where I stand with that. And uh, odor, they need to demonstrate that they have scrubbers or water-based uh, odor control uh, methods. Um, and, I, and I think one might think that I'm picking on this particular industry. Um, well, I guess I am, because it is very um, different than uh, backyards farms, for example, that grow tomatoes. Um, I think it's, it's something, because it's new in Maine, uh, and we have an opportunity to put in performance standards that can, can have benefits long term, um, I think it's important just to take a look at these a little bit uh, deeper to make sure that we're not missing an opportunity. Uh, we could offset some of that EUI if they demonstrate they can do distributed generation, for example. They can make up that through uh, a solar or uh, through other means of uh, power generation, whether it's trigen or, or anything like that. So that's where I'm coming down on this whole broad um, topic. Can I, can I ask a quick question? clarifying question for it was kind of just sparked something Jay at one point it said that the zoning overlay was really only considered during um, retail right no one actually considered or discussed the zoning overlay in the context of cultivation and manufacturing is that correct correct the ordinance committee didn't really delve into that realm. It, the only reason I bring this up at this point is you know, we are encompassing multiple zones. I think there's some good points behind design standards and possible bake, uh, uh, buffering and uh, size and bulk that, or space and bulk that we should, should I think should maybe, add, is it worthwhile to say maybe, maybe the council should consider looking at an overlay district with its own specific design standards for this type of process in this town? separate of what a commercial or an industrial or a Haigas Parkway setbacks and et cetera should have. Mm -hmm. Is that a worthwhile recommendation to the council? I think it is. I see head nodding. I do. Okay. So I believe this planning board will also recommend to the council they consider looking at a overlay district uh, for marijuana cultivation and manufacturing facilities that also would uh, encompass perhaps uh, design standards specific to the industry. Um, is that fair? Uh, that I say that adequately? I think that does a trick. All in favor of making that recommendation. Show that as unanimous. Are there any other recommendations that this board, yes, Rachel. Yeah, I, I would suggest that we really be specific about the site plan review. Um, and that the marijuana cultivation and manufacturing in or out of the RF is subject to site plan review. That would be our that, recommendation. That, yeah, that we're, even if they ignore no, everything no, else no, we've no said, no please, matter, please put a site review process. Yeah, in where, no matter. I think that's no a matter, fair recommendation. No matter where it is. Correct. I think that's a good one. Can I, can I just ask for clarification on that point? Because um, typically a new business would trigger site plan review if they're building a new building. Um, but typically what we see in industrial zones when one use moves out, a manufacturer moves out, and a warehouse moves into the same building, they haven't changed anything. They certainly come get a certificate of occupancy, but it doesn't become before this board for site plan. Now the, the license ordinance has all those performance standards that the council will be reviewing. And I know that was actually a point of discussion through the ordinance committee as well as who should really do this uh, sort of review process for the, uh, for the licensing. Is it a council or a planning board or who? And, and they sort of felt like a, a liquor license or a food license, a food handler's license, that maybe that best fit with council. So I guess my question would be, 
to the board in that recommendation, in that discussion, are you really talking about new buildings or are you thinking for any, even a conversion of an existing warehouse building if they want to start doing cultivation, again, in an industrial district or some other area that is otherwise approved depending on how council takes the, the uh, suggestions of the board? Uh, I just want to be clear on what we're suggesting. For what it's yes, worth, I would say site plan for site, I mean, I think it, let's get a site plan on it. But yeah, cer right. certainly for the certainly for a new building, yep. um, and we've had requests in the past for what is it modifications, uh, minor yep. modifications. Mm -hmm. So if it's an existing building, and the question is, uh, is it the, the odor mitigation, and that's the only change, that would be something that would be not necessarily come to us unless it's a, just a modification. It would come to the planning department and whatever else the council has said so I don't necessarily think we need to vote on the um, change of tenant unless there are some substantial and I don't know how to phrase that but some substantial modifications that are required change of use to building change of to use ensure, right to might trigger that and that yeah. would be at the code level yeah and I would also suspect uh, well, just based I, on the industry in and of itself there would be a lot of different mechanicals, I assume, from one business to another. I think, I think it's possible one other different business would slide in. But if they're going to have to modify the exterior or the mechanicals, would that necessarily trigger? Um, I'd say if they're putting an air handling unit on, which they're required to do as part of this, an odor mitigation unit, that probably wouldn't trigger site plan review. It, to an existing building, again. So I think if they're putting a, a new building in or if they're adding on to the building, if they're changing the parking layout, but if they're really working within the footprint of the existing building and the footprint of the existing parking area, and that you probably typically, this board wouldn't see it. So I think that's, that's where I want to be sure there's clarification. So to the point that I, I want to be clear on what the board's asking, are you interested in change of uses coming before you or really just things that typically would come before you for site plan anyway? Um, because that is currently what would happen. If something, if a, one of these users wants to go into any of these zones and they trigger site plan review, they're coming to you. If they go into a zone that, and what they're proposing to do wouldn't otherwise trigger site plan review, currently they wouldn't. So I think we, I just want to be clear as staff as to what that recommendation council is. Anything related to marijuana should come to site plan review or only those things that would typically with any other business come before you? And my, my recommendation would be um, status quo, whatever is typical okay. now would continue. So then that that wouldn't necessitate any ordinance change because that's I, not from yeah. current, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and to that point, Jay, I think that's covered. Uh, you mentioned you know changing a rooftop unit or putting a, a rooftop unit. Well, I think there's code requirements for standards uh, that incorporate rooftop units, mm -hmm. and so that would have to be before the department. Sure. Absolutely. And so I yeah. think you got it there. Okay. And um, we don't need to go through some of that other uh, unnecessary site plan reviews when we have a change of use in a building. I would say just to add to it, too, with the licensing requirements that they're proposing here, um, it, you know, the public actually would be notified of mm -hmm. the change at that point. They have to have a hearing. So uh, I don't know why the planning board would need to see you know, maybe. the extra wall pack or <laughs> maybe, you know, an extra tree or parking spot. So I'd, I'd be comfortable knowing that that was in place for the public's use. I mean, I think that's really the key. And I think we're really getting better at this as a town is that public involvement and notification. Um, we've made some changes to contract zones and amendments mm -hmm. to contract zones. And, and I think this is also a good step by making sure that this is always publicly notified to abutters and <clears throat> on a council agenda too. So uh, yeah, I have a question for Jay. Um, just kind of curious, Jay, um, is the, uh, does the MMA offer any guidance to communities as to how to handle, because most main communities are probably rural communities, you know, and um, uh, is, uh, is there an organization such as MMA offering any kind of guidance as to how to handle any of this stuff? Or is each community basically on their own trying to figure this all out? Uh, no, over the last number of years, there's been a number of different uh, organized trainings, conferences, workshops that communities are invited to through MMA and others. 
Um, I know Larissa Crockett, our assistant town manager, has been in touch with MMA legal services, and uh, you know they often have model ordinances. Um, there's been a discussion with other communities, so there has been a lot of outreach and a number of different staff, uh, folks from police, public safety, code office, planning, have all been to various trainings, workshops, conferences on all the various pieces of this that come together. So there has been a lot of sort of that outreach and sort of discussion between communities as to how are you handling this issue. <laughs> Did you, um, is there um, any kind of uh, discussions with um, neighboring communities to see how, for instance, how is Gorham handling the RF area that's adjacent to our RF area? You know what I mean? Yep. Um, and again, I, I believe the Ordinance Committee and through the work of Larissa have had discussions with or are aware of what our budding uh, towns are doing. I, I don't know how deep those conversations have gone, but I certainly know there, there have been some level of discussion. Okay. Any out of recommendations? I am. <laughs> We have notes. They'll be typed up. And again, just so folks know, the next uh, scheduled formal bit of this process will be a public hearing that is scheduled for council on Wednesday night. So staff, Doreen, will uh, work to type up minutes and get those out to council as soon as we're able, uh, hopefully by the end of the day tomorrow. Next item on our agenda this evening is a staff report. Um, I'll start. Um, we did get a request from a board member about um, sort of where certain projects are at in town, and I just want to remind the board that um, it was requested to staff to report on pre-construction meetings um, as different projects occur. So unless you hear from me um, during this time about pre-construction meetings that have occurred, then certain projects have not uh, started uh, moving forward, so I'll, I'll leave it at that. I don't know if any other staff has any other staff report. Not at this time. Thanks. Administrative amendment report. Uh, none at this time. Correspondence. Planning board comments. Yes, Rachel. Uh, I just wanted to note that I saw in the Portland Press Herald today that the um, Maine Housing Authority has released. Uh, funding and a substantial amount is coming to Scarborough. Um, I think it's in the vicinity of at least $7 million for the Uplands and um, an additional amount of money for Bessie Commons. So that money that had been frozen for many years is starting to flow and Scarborough did pretty well. Thank you. Any other planning board comments? With that, I will make a motion to adjourn. We have a second. Second. Okay. All in favor. Thank you. Good night, everyone.